If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance. Declaring war on the New World Order. TruthRadioShow.com Shalom and welcome to the Dan Bedani Show at TruthRadioShow.com and welcome to the Book of Romans. So if you miss uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Acts, we do got them in our playlist chapter by chapter. So what we do here, we're going to cover Romans chapter 1 today. We do chapter by chapter, an in-depth, comprehensive study of the Bible. So a typical uh, Bible study approach, which is very important to do, guys. Number one, uh, we pray for wisdom and understanding. So let's do that right now. So Yeshua Jesus, we come before you and ask you to forgive us all individually of our sins and trespasses that we may have committed. And we ask you to wash us clean with your precious blood. And Heavenly Father, we come before you to ask you to write your word upon our hearts, with the Holy Spirit upon us to give us uh, your word, disseminate the truth of your word and all the meat and potatoes, all the important information that you want us to learn today and amazing book of Romans chapter 1 today. We ask you also to comfort everybody that needs comfort in any which way and protect us all from the forces of evil. In your mighty name, amen. So what we also do is read the scripture in context. We don't, you know, say a couple words out of rest and jump to another book, another chapter like typical churches do. We don't do that. We read the scripture in context. So there's no room for interpretation. It's clear as day when you do this. And your context is key. Very important to understand that. And let the scripture interpret scripture. So if you follow us through the other books, you'll understand why we do this. And we demonstrated so many times why this is important. Because uh, we don't lean on our own understanding or from some ministry, whatever the case. We lean on the word of God, what the word of God has to tell us. So that being said, guys, if you've got a Bible, open it up to Romans chapter 1. And uh, we use the King James Version up on the screen here. So uh, Romans chapter 1, this is uh, by Paul. Used to be Saul, now Paul, one of the greatest apostles uh, that have lived. So Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. So which had promised for by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. So concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, which is made of the seed of David according to the flesh. So the Son of God, that's what it's saying, right? And what we do is, if you just join us here in this um, video, and if you haven't watched the other videos we did, we read the scripture, and we really get into the meat and potatoes of it. In other words, we pull up the context. If we don't know what the word means, we look it up. And we do a specific Bible study chapter by chapter. So this video could take 20 minutes, could take an hour. Where the Holy Spirit leads us, we go. So if you're looking for something just to read the Bible, guys, there's a million other people could do it ten times better than me. <laughs> so um, I would you know, suggest you go there. But if you're looking for something to read the Bible and explain it and work together, just like sit there and, uh, and I ask people in the chat room too, uh, which I'm not live or anything, but um, if uh, when this premieres, engage with each other, fellowship with each other. And also in the comment section, if you think I missed something or whatever the case, uh, you don't agree, whatever, just put in the comment section. And I'll get back to you. Uh, so, yeah, we pull up the meat and potatoes. And uh, of um, that's the best way I could put it. The, the context, that's very important to understand. Because the Bible, I mean, yeah, this one chapter, we got how many verses? 32 verses. We could read through this in probably two minutes. Not even. That's not what we do. So I'm going to explain this this time here. And I'm not going to keep repeating myself through the rest of the series. But we read through it and just examine everything we can. So I hope that makes sense to you, and you're going to find out here. So now, concerning his son, not the son of Paul, obviously, the son of G uh, God, Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, right? The seed of David, which is the bloodline, the you know, the, the family tree. Which Mary was part of that, and that's why God chose Mary to uh, host um, Jesus, because Mary was pure, yes, yeah, she wasn't perfect from sin, nobody was. But she was pure, her bloodline, and she was she loved God. She was a virgin and everything else, so she was the perfect choice for to host the seed of the Holy Spirit. So, and uh, declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of Holiness 
uh, by the resurrection from the dead. Now, as we read Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Acts, we've seen exactly the whole uh, kit and caboodle, basically when Jesus was born, all through his life, and his ministry, and also him being crucified and raised from the dead. So, by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, right? So, we, we did. We received the grace of salvation and apostleship. And being obedient to the faith among all nations for his name, right? And among who are we also called of Jesus Christ? So, we get into the word grace, and I just want to reiterate, as I said before, Grace, yes, we are saved by grace. I'll agree 100%, but grace is not a free pass to sin. Because I know the dispensationalist movement out there, and they try to say the Ten Commandments were abolished in Galatians uh, when Paul said the ordinances were nailed to the cross. No, they were not. It was ordinances, not the commandments. There's a difference between ordinances, commandments, statutes, and laws. We'll get into that when we get to the book of Galatians and everything else where it's uh, applicable. But just saying grace, yeah, we're saved by grace, but it doesn't mean you have a free pass to sin. I want to point that out. Regardless of what the modern day churches teach. So anyway, to all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be by saints, grace to you from uh, our God and Father, I'm sorry, and the Lord Jesus Christ. So this is uh, obviously a letter to the Romans from Paul. And Paul, he's hands down the, the best apostle that ever lived. He used to be a persecutor and a murderer of uh, Jesus' people, right? And his name was Saul at the time. He got converted by Jesus to be to lead his uh, church, basically. And Paul, wow, what an amazing weapon Paul is. And that's why modern day religions out there and cults hate Paul. Even though the um, the Kabbalistic people bash Paul, the Essenes bash Paul, all false religions bash Paul. Because Paul was very effective. Two people they can't stand in the Bible in these modern day churches is Paul and Jesus. That means Paul and Jesus both did a good job. So anyway, uh, first I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all you all. That your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. Uh, for God is my witness, whom I have served with my spirit in the gospel of the Son, and that without season I make mention of you always in my prayers. So I'm making requests, if any by means now at length, I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. So as you have been following us through the series here, yeah, we've uh, witnessed how Paul was supposed to be executed by the Jews. They did the same exact thing to Stephen. Stephen, he was short-lived as an apostle, but he was a mighty apostle. And the Jews ceased to kill him, right? And they did the same thing to Jesus. And they tried to do this to Paul. But because Paul being a Roman, there was people in Rome that protected Paul. That gave it Paul more time to spread the gospel. And now this is his letters to the Romans. We talked about this in Acts. So if you miss those series, guys, please go watch them in our playlist. So this is Paul now in Rome. He's right. He, this is the letter to the Romans. Spreading the gospel like wildfire. And especially being a Rome, guys. I mean, the, the, the church of Rome is all pagan at the time. So Paul is waking up a lot of people, Right? So, verse 11, for I long to see you, that I may impart into you by some spiritual gift to the end that ye may be established. That is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith, both you and me. Mutual faith means, or, or you know, obviously, uh, both of our faith in Jesus Christ. Now I would have not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I propose to come unto you, but was let hear it that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among the other Gentiles. And I am adept of both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. And as so much as in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome as well, also. So what he's trying to say is that I'm you know nobody special. I'm just out here, I'm just like you guys. The Gentiles, the Greeks, and all that, and I, 
I'm just a witness of Jesus Christ that's trying to proclaim the gospel. And for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, and to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So it's for everybody, he's saying, right? The gospel of Christ is for everyone. Anybody, doesn't matter where you come from, what you did, you come to believe in the gospel, you believe in Jesus Christ, and it's for you. It's for everybody that would accept Jesus Christ. For therein is in righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, just shall live by faith. So living by faith means just living by faith in Jesus Christ and trusting him. And I like how he says, as it is written. How many times does Jesus say that? As it is written, referring to, at the time, the scriptures that were there, which was, uh, you know, we call the Old Testament. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. So now this is where he really starts hammering to a lot of stuff, especially today. We're going to get into some stuff that's going to seem very controversial that's going on now, guys. And this, this is very prophetic, really is. Because the things that they do do in Rome during those days, they're doing it here in the United States in these days in every other country. It's sickening. And he's saying, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all un ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth of un un unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has shown it unto them. As he's doing right now, God is showing us Manifesting the truth in us, okay, showing us the truth. And he says, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they were without excuse. So that's the faith, too, is believing in the invisible things that we can't see in the carnal flesh, right? But are clearly seen. You know, if you, you understand what that means, it's like, yeah, to the world, these things like of God, right, they're invisible. You know, of the world, right? And they're clearly seen. You know, basically, if we could clearly see these things through the spirit. And because of that, we knew, they knew, I'm sorry, they knew God. They glorified him as God, not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Well, it sound like much today, right? Yeah. People know God, right? They bash God all the time. They're not thankful to him. And they use their vain imaginations and have full shots. That goes on today. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Yeah. Uh, does that ring a bell, guys? Yeah. How many of the world's elite out there, right? These top scientists, these top people that deem experts by the world. The academia and everything else, right? They claim to be wise, but guess what? They're fools. You got the so-called scientists on TV, uh, Neil deGrasse or whatever his name is, uh, all these top scientists and all that who profess things that contradict the Bible. But they're deemed experts to the world, right? They profess to be wise, but, well, they're fools. And here's where it gets controversial, right? And change the glory of uncorruptible God into the image made like unto corruptible man, into birds, into four footed beasts, and creeping things. Yeah, idol worship and everything, right? How many cults out there, like the Bohemian Grove, that have, I worship birds, which owls? Yeah, and they change these uncorruptible things. The glory of the uncorrupted God, I'm sorry, into image made unto corruptible men. Which here, we, it's like a second commandment violation. Idolatry. They're doing that today. And wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleansiness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Which way, this is sexual. This gets sexual now, right? Now, um... I don't know when y'all got to watch this video. I'm premiering this in August of 2023. We just got over uh, two months ago, Pride Month, right? With the LGBT stuff. So we're going to get into this, right? 
And I want to really point this out when we're kind of coming up in the uh, next couple of verses. There's a lot of so-called ministers out there, pastors, the gay pastors and all that. They try to say the Bible says nothing about this stuff. It doesn't condemn homosexuality. Well, wait till you say it. And again, they dishonor themselves and who change the truth of this is this is the LGBT churches, LGBT churches out there, the rainbow churches, right? And these false churches out there who blow smoke up people's rear ends, okay, tickle their ears, and tell them what they want to hear, but they don't tell them the truth, right? These are fake churches out there, right? And this is back in Rome then, okay? Almost two thousand years ago, this is back in Rome. This is today here in the United States. It's a sickness. Again, wherefore. God also made them up to uncleansedness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Yeah, sexual fornication and all that stuff, right? And who changed the truth of God into a lie. Tell me they don't do that today in the churches now. And worship and serve the preacher more than the creator. Who is blessed forever. Amen. Right? And for this cause, God gave them up into a vile affection. Vile is very, yeah, this is uh, some serious stuff. For even their woman did change the natural use into that which was against nature. So what is that? If the woman changed her natural use, all right, well, in other words, woman was built and created by God to, you know, get married one day and have a child by a man, right? Yeah. This gets into the transgenderism and all this other stuff, the nasty stuff that's going on today. And likewise, also the men. Yeah, so changing their natural ways. Transgenderism, homosexuality, this is exactly what it's talking about, right? And it, it, this is so awesome because it nails these so-called pastors, these rainbow churches, I call them today. It's sick then, right? Again, for this cause that God gave them up to vile fiction, uh, affections, I'm sorry, for even their own woman did change their natural use into that which is against nature. A woman's not supposed to be having sex with another woman. A man's not supposed to be having sex with another man. It goes against God's nature. Leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one toward one another. Look, yeah, woman and woman. Their lust, that's homosexuality. Men with men, okay, right here. So you gay pastors out there and priests and all that. To say, oh, the Bible doesn't say nothing about homosexuality or in the New Testament. Well, here we are in the book of Romans, right off the bat, chapter 1. Yes, he said, uh, Paul's saying just that. Talk about women laying with women and men with men here, yeah, right? Working that which is unseemly to receiving themselves that recompense of the error which was met. And I want to see what recompense means. Uh, that's the point of the Bible so compense. Theological terms, which means to give back in return. There is a settlement payment. All right, yeah, to give back in return. That's what it means. So, uh, so yeah, the, uh, receiving themselves that gives back in return of that error, which was met. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to rape reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Right, and I want to point out too, uh, and I want to make sure this is clarified, right? Back in verse 27 here. Well, 26, 27 about their woman changing their natural use, okay, which goes against nature. And likewise with the men, leaving their natural use of the woman and burned in their own lust toward one another. Right? Then men with men, disgusting, right? Working that which is unseemly and receiving themselves as a recompense of the error in which was met. So, next time some wannabe pastor tells you the New Testament has nothing to say about homosexuality, yeah, you tell them to go read Romans chapter 1. So even, even if they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to reparate minds, to do those things which are not, not convenient. So let's find a... Sometimes I forget what a word re, means here. A reprobate mind, to do the things which are not convenient. Uh, so...
a doctrine which teaches that a person can reject the gospel to point where God in turn rejects them and curses their conscience. So that's what repo bait man means. So, yeah, and I know that there's nothing wrong with uh, looking up a word, guys. And if you forget a word, look it up. Because the thing is, if you ignore the meaning, because I don't know people just want to read to it, right? If you just ignore it or just bypass it, and without taking the time to uh, research that word, yeah, you're going to miss some key stuff, guys. Because that one word could change the entire outcome of the rest. So if you have a clear understanding of these words, even if you have, you know, you're like, uh, I think I know what it is, go look it up. There's no speed race to read the Bible. The Bible's not a magazine or a novel that you can zip through with no problem. It's not like that. You're supposed to take your time, study it, as we're doing here. It's not a race. Yeah, sure, somebody can zip through the Bible in like, what, six months? If they read fast and everything, but you're not going to learn nothing from it. I'd rather have somebody read the Bible take two, three years to read it. When it's done right, you learn more than the person that's read it twice, two or three times, speeding through it. So understand that, right? So again, it's saying being un uh, filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful. Proud boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. Right? So, to clarify this man, man and woman, woman thing, right? Yeah. Here's the word right there fornication. And I'll grant it, fornication is done any, any kind of sex outside marriage. It doesn't matter if you're a guy and you had sex with a girl outside of marriage. Yeah, it's for, it's, one, it's fornicating. Man with the man, it's fornicating. And that's actually an abomination in the Old Testament. But still fornicating. So that's what they're talking about. Sexual ungodliness right there. And this was going on in Rome big time, guys. And he's uh, pagan festival there even to this day. These pagan, disgusting festivals like the Lupacabra, uh, Valentine's Day, uh, the holidays like that, that still go on to this day in Rome. These pagan festivals and feasts and everything, which are all commercialized today, these are some nasty things that go on in Rome. Giant orgies with uh, men and men, women and women, all kinds of things going on, and a lot of them using the animal so it's disgusting. Bestiality and all kinds of things they do in Rome. So this is why, this is why Paul is in Rome trying to win these people over to bring them to God. You know, I just want to know what a backbiter is. <laughs> so, uh, backbiter KJV. What is a backbiter? Talking maliciously against someone who's not present. All right, so somebody who talks behind, you know, talks crap. Uh, smack whatever behind somebody's back. So that's what um, a backbiter means. A backstabber, we call it today, right? Yeah. So if you're not there, they'll talk bad about you. If you're there, they'll like, hey, how you doing? You know, stuff like that. So I just want to understand what these mean. So yeah, disobedient to parents. I mean, that's going on today. And without understanding covenant breakers, without natural affection, implicable, unmerciful. Who know the judgment of God, but they which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only to do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. So this is what Paul's talking about, right? These people that commit homosexuality and all kinds of sexual disgust and stuff and just evil altogether. People who uh, uh, conjure up evil things, conspire for evil Malignantly whisperers and all kinds of just you know evil stuff that Paul is addressing here in Rome, and in today's world, this is all over the world. And who you know, the thing is, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only to do the same, but to have pleasure in them that do them. So here's the thing, guys, and this is how you know the Holy Spirit's in you, right? Now, we all sin. 
Absolutely. We all sin. Not proud to say it, right? But what happens when you sin? You want to hang your head down in shame, right? And you feel bad. You're like, oh, I can't believe I just did that. Oh, darn, you know? That's the Holy Spirit. That's how you know the Holy Spirit's with you because it's um, a repentative heart you have, right? The people who do this evil, they don't repent from it. They don't have any remorse. And they dwell in this sin. And the Bible says they're worthy of death. That talk, <laughs> excuse me, that talking about whether your death, that's uh, in the eternal life. Because we all face the first death, unless uh, we're here for the return of Jesus. We all face the first death, and the second death is this here, what they're talking about spiritually. They're, they're, all, they're all worthy of death spiritually. Hell and the lake of fire. And most of these people that do these things, they, they you know, how many times... Especially the LGBT stuff, right? They sit there and mock our Savior. On these uh, floats they have in the parades and all that, they have a naked Jesus up there, and they have um, these apostles sitting there doing ungodly things with each other, right? It is a smacking in the face to our prayer. And they sit there and purposely mock us, guys. And especially mock Jesus Christ. It's sickening. And this stuff was going back out in Rome. I mean, back then, this, the horrible things that there was going on in Rome, especially with sexuality and the pagan feasts and everything else we talked about. Uh, nasty things, guys. So we just wanted to break into the book of uh, Romans here, which I'm excited to do. Can't wait to get to the next video, uh, which we're going to do chapter two. So again, we do, and I know the beginning, um, when we first start a book, the beginning is usually quick because it's uh, Paul, whoever, introducing themselves and what, you know, what they're doing, right? So there's not much you could pull out of it. But as you go on through the scriptures, like we pulled out of here, right? About woman on woman, men on men, and stuff like that. And worshiping other, you know, false idols and all that stuff. That's when you could pull out the real context of it, right? And to understand what's going on here. And again, some of these videos will go for 20 minutes, they'll go for an hour. Depends on the context of the book and the chapter. So if you guys like feel like I left something out, uh, please put it in the comment section. Let me know. And if you want to add something to it, say, hey, listen, you missed this. Or we think I'm wrong, whatever the case, you know, put it in the comment section. Because God says to challenge every spirit. So I don't expect people just to believe what I just said. Just because I want you to read it for yourself. That's the thing, right? You need to read the Bible for yourself. Don't take anybody else's word for it. Read it for yourself. And let me know what you think in the comment section. Not the live chat. <clears throat> I mean, you can fellowship in the live chat when it premieres, but the comment section is there all the time. So let me know in the comment section what you think. And uh, so I can't wait to get into chapter two. It's going to be pretty exciting. So thank you all for tuning in. And check out truthradioshow.com. And actually, let me go there right now. So if you go to truthradioshow.com, This is what it looks like on the computer. Uh, the phone is a little different, but right here, it's a Bible study series. And it looks to our YouTube channel. So, uh, like the book of Matthew, right? We got chapter by chapter. If you want to start the series, go for it. And Ma Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, and we just, we're going to be out of Romans uh, just as soon as I'm done with this video here. So, um, it's exciting stuff. And we're going to go through the entire Bible eventually. But, and it, what happened was a while ago, I started with the book of Jude, actually. I was like, because yeah, I knew the book of Jude pretty good. It's like, let me just do a video on this. And I don't listen to here because I'm going to redo it when I uh, get to it. But um, it's like, yeah, I was excited to do it. So I was like, let me just do Matthew, the book of Matthew. Went through Matthew. I'm like, let's just keep going. We're, uh, we got through Mark, Luke, John, Acts, and now we're on Romans, which is uh, pretty exciting. So if you go to truthradioshow.com. You'll have links to all our social media pages, our documentaries right there. And our Spiritual Warfare Friday shows and our new shows, which is Breaking the World Order. And all the shows from ICTV and all our affiliate stations. So please check that out, guys, on our social media links. Uh, donation pages right there at the PayPal and the Ko-Fi site. we got a Venmo and Cash app, too. Uh, all the links are in the description. So, yeah, we... Uh, Got it all, guys, and our Rumble channel and YouTube and all that. So please support our ministry. Uh, like, share, and subscribe. And number one is pray for us, guys.
So we'll see you for Romans chapter 2. So it's going to be pretty exciting. So God bless Shalom. Remember, you are the resistance.